Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Environmental Social Justice. I'm your host, Wendy Nystrom. Today's special guest is LeVar Jackson. He is the founder and CEO of the Y Group, but spelled Y-O-G-H. We're going to get into that in a moment. Welcome to the show, LeVar. Hi. Um, happy, happy to be here. Well, I love having, I mean, you and I have talked quite a bit. You are an absolutely fascinating and engaging man. Everything that you do of marrying art and engineering is phenomenal. So um, before we dive into the Y group, could you explain your background in art and how that led you to your world of energy, engineering, hospitality? Well, I um, I will say like a, it was a pure hap So when um, I got into art, I had taken a trip to London and Paris and I kind of just like took photos and I came back and I showed friends and family and they were like, oh, if you print them out and you know, frame them, I'll buy them from you. Like they were really, it was, they said they were really good. It was, looking back, they're actually fairly decent. Um, I've done, I've slipped off the edge on, on some of my stuff. So I started out doing kind of like fine art photography and it pulled me more into, um, um, more into kind of using art as a, as a way of, of um, connecting with people in, in, but it doesn't, it, it, art doesn't have to be just for a few. So yeah. I wanted to make it a little bit more uh, mass market and I went towards um, uh, art for hotels. Um, and then I came into, as I was working through that, I saw the, like the amount of waste that comes around just any sort of furnishing. Uh, oh, yeah. So uh, every five to seven years when a hotel re redoes itself, like refurnishes itself, uh, all that art goes in the garbage, it's not recyclable. You may be able to get some nice pieces out of the lobby and controlled space, but that's also just the duty cycle of a room. So as a person, think of how you come into the room, you open you open the door, you change the thermometer, you um, open or close the shades, or usually close the shades. Um, so you violently change your heat, humidity, and temperature drastically within a couple of minutes. Um, yeah. If you then pop into the shower and you leave the door open, Thank you for ruining the art that's in the room. <laughs> um, I guess <laughs> I that, never thought about that. <laughs> the steam and all that stuff comes out. Yeah. So you're doing that. Then you say you leave for the day. You're like, I'm ready to go out, have dinner. The housekeeping comes in, opens the windows, turns off the AC, turns off the lights, um, sprays chemicals to clean some stuff, violently changes heating, temperature, and humidity. And then you add in chemicals into the mix. So the duty cycle for that art is very much harder than if it was an art museum where the temperature is very specific, it's got a very specific humidity and it has very specific lighting conditions. So you doing the opposite to a piece of art, which is effectively ruins it. Ruining it, yeah. Um, I did come across a canvas that was recyclable and I tried to sell it to hotels and it was only about like a penny more per square foot. Um, and it was always shot down. There was no ROI on it. There was no, um, it, they're just effectively just wasting it. They were like, this is wasting money. How, what's, what am I doing for the hotel to, you know, of course that, you know, penny per square foot does add up over a whole, whole, whole entire hotel, but you have the option of actually reusing that canvas second time. And then you don't need to throw it in the garbage. And then you can just reuse the stuff later. Like just repaint it. You can strip it, repaint it. Um, in 15 years that I had that company, not a single sale of that ever happened because I could not prove to the hotel that it was worth it. Oh, in wow. fact, most hotels are forced into putting art on the wall by their brand standards. So saying every certain number of feet or every certain number of degrees of eye view, you have to have something there so your room doesn't look like a jail cell. Um, oh. That is changing now where people are starting embracing it and like boutique hotels have really helped with that. But it was a very hard go, you know, right after, <laughs> the, um, you know, 2008, you know, everything collapsed to get oh, yeah, people to yeah. do that. Yeah. It, and the cost that, you know, that is actually very true with respect to any business. They want the most bang for their buck and they're not going to think about anything else, especially in 2008. It's a mm -hmm. rough year for people. And that was when you started, it was called Visual Renaissance, correct? That was the yes. company you started? Yes. And that is part of the the Y group, the Yo group. Um, so you now went from the visual renaissance art side mm. to energy and hospitality. Talk about that transition, because that's a very unique transition. That transition um, was, you know, predicated effectively by the pandemic. Um, you know, the pandemic hit, art sales are drying up. What do I do? 
I have always been highly interested in sustainability, and I'm always the person that I I have a, a belief that sustainability we should have we should have additive sustainability. So what we have now is that you can't do this. Stop doing this. Instead of saying, how can we figure out how you can do this in a sustainable way? So I was saying, don't take the flight, don't travel, don't you know drive in a car, don't. Yeah do these things and technically if you're really about you know sub- subtractive uh things like you can't have pets either they're a huge you know carbon bur- burden but how can you do this in a sustainable way so we did it once with um hairspray and the ozone layer yes. and we actually succeeded we can do it we didn't make to tell you how dare you use hairspray like no we'll find a different chemical we'll figure out a better way to do it that's what i'm and here that's you know that. exactly that's what we, uh, we really hear about so we went, so I went into um, a friend, uh, was, uh, had a green company and he was entering the carbon credit market and I joined. Um, the carbon credits are very, it's a dichotomy. It's either the, hi- the carbon credits are highly useful, highly effective, or they're highly ineffective. And in fact, borderline on fraud. If I, uh, yeah. so yes. when you spread it like that, but the highly ineffective ones are the cheap ones and everyone just buys the cheap ones. And they're, so again, tree planting, fantastic. Um, they're good for, you know, biosphere. It's good for plant, you know, animals, but chopping down a tree in New York and then planting a tree in California are not the same. The animals are not going to be taking care of the need to, you have to replace it where you took it down from, not yeah. from some locale thousands of miles away. Um, or, you know, Cutting out a tree in, in, you know, the Amazon, cutting down and then just planting stuff in, Cal- in, in Canada. Those are not the same. The, okay. So, and if you're coming at it from a carbon sequestering standpoint, you have to remove carbon from the system completely. Trees do not remove uh, from the, the system completely because they'll die and the, the carbon goes right back into, the, into uh, circulation. So if you took that tree, then killed it, and then buried it under the ground to make coal effectively and like keep it away, yes. But the ineffectiveness is also aftercare. So they plant the trees at little saplings. They rate each tree. So bad, poor ones rate the trees based on they're fully grown for absorbing carbon. So saying, oh, it's going to absorb 100 tons of carbon a year. It's a little stick in the ground with some leaves. Like it's not, it's not doing going that. to absorb all that stuff and put it, a, a, you know, put it into, um, take it out of the, the. But then there's also aftercare of how far does it grow? There's no aftercare in a uh, you know the really poor uh, carbon credits that are you know oh it's fifty cents to plant a tree those ones just they throw them down and they leave them alone yeah. so um, are they being watered you know they, are they do or have they been established yeah, they sure have they been yeah. you know um, you know there's also natural disasters maybe there was a forest fire and or it got struck by lightning or there, it gets it's diseased and it has to die or there's a, a you know bug infestation that has you know kills it off and then. To top that all off at the top is there's nothing preventing the companies from coming back and cutting the same trees down that they planted and then replanting the exact same space and charging someone else. So oh. it was kind of like um, being a little bit of a used car salesman. And I was trying to push, you know, the good carbon credits, direct our capture. Fantastic. If you do it in the right way, you're pulling air, uh, you know, um, carbon directly out of the air and you're pumping it and turning it into a slurry and pumping it underground. That is the way you have to put it back where it was and lock it away, you know, like a tomb. So that's absolutely fantastic, but it's a thousand times more expensive. And I mean, literally a thousand times more expensive. So maybe a thousand times, you know, a thousand dollars per metric ton for direct air capture, but that tree is only a dollar. So people will go for the dollar over the thousand, but they should. So like airlines love planting trees. They should do direct air capture because that's what they're directly doing, throwing all that stuff out into oh, the yeah. you know in, into the world so i said to myself i can't i if i, I want to make a real difference i've always had these like inventions rattling around in my mind this is the time where i can dedicate to get those inventions done because effectively it's april you know 2020 and the world has ceased you know has stopped effectively yes. um so i took a lot of you know pulled myself aside said, hey, if I'm going to enter, I love hospitality. I'm going to enter back into this market. I'm going to actually make a difference. I always wanted to be a hotel owner, but if I'm going, and I'm going to say this, no one needs 
a econo box hotel. The world's not going to die if I don't build another econo box hotel. Um, so how about I actually do something that actually affects people that I can measure that affects people that is actually quantifiable versus like real vague math. So if I produce power, you know, sustainably, I can tell you I made this amount of megawatts per, um, you know, sustainably. If I make that heat and cooling sustainably, I can say I made this amount of BTUs sustainably and I have a direct source. So it's kind of like material sourcing. I know the chain of command from, you know, A to Z and has the best kind of sustainability. Any other types that are like, oh, something might happen that hurts our cause. And it, it, it makes it less trustworthy uh, for us to move forward as a society if it's kind of like magic and believe me and it's behind my back. It might not really be as accurate as it is. You know, it just hurts. transparent with your information. Um, yes. And that, that, you know, with calling it the why company, you previously said, be the why, not the because. Yes. And that's extremely important that people, you know, and could you explain what that means with your with your be the why, not the because? So being in the why is be the reason that things move forward. Let's be proactive in our things. Be the reason that we're driving things forward. Be the reason that we are sustainable, but also still able to do these things. Yeah. You know, um, stop being the, let's stop being reactive. So even in, we, well, take it in the lens of hospitality. Hotels are still like claiming low flow toilets and LED lights as like the huge thing that they're doing. That as individuals, we had to get that out of our houses 20 years ago. Why are hotels still talking about low flow toilets? Yes, there are very necessary, but we should be we should have already done this and been on to something new and moving on to you know tighter tolerances and 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 supply chains and all these other things where they're still talking about LED light bulbs that you and I as individuals we're not allowed to have since I think 2000. Um, I think oh, it was 2000. So, wow. so you, what you're saying is they're setting the bar super low and just stepping on over. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and then, um, so with your use, you, you have a lot of inventions and one of the, you know, two of them I really want to focus on first is your Kwai energy system. Yes. Please tell me I said that correctly. I don't know if I did. Uh, key. Key. Like uh, the I key energies. That. But I, <laughs> it's, um, it's spelled Q U A I, so I screwed that up. <laughs> oh no! Listen, listen, it's French, so it's like keys are like things that keep a shore from washing away, like on a riverfront or like beach. They usually have like little concrete things that you walk along. But oh, I just we call to, that roof wrap here, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, we named it Key um, explicitly because it's everything that you need, energies that you need in whether it's in um, any living environment. So any uh, place a human is, this is what they need to effectively run their lives. You need heating, cooling, and electricity. Of course, you need some water, but that's a different kind of energy, but we'll get into that with low flow toilet and things. So the concept is, and our models and our prototype were based, the first lesson we learned to produce um, you know, sustainable things at, at a good cost, they have to be off the shelf parts. Yeah. We made sure to design the system with stuff that you can find at Home Depot, clink it together. And so that also cuts down on, on repair times. So we're able to produce electricity, heating and cooling, not just um, for the property sustainably, 100% sustainably, but also mm -hmm. for the community as well, have that extend out. So it's not just a hotel coming in and being a resource hog, and then if they're producing its own power, is it still a resource hog if it's not getting out to the community? But how about we provide as much as we can? But then we design the hotel to use as little electricity as possible. So most electricity goes out into the um, into the community. Oh, wow. How do we do that? We make sure that we pull heat from, our, or from the property. We make sure we pull cooling. If you have a deep basement, which ho hotels have, that's a heat sink. When you go in the basement in the summertime and it's cool, how about you make sure you spread that coolness out through the rest of the building so you don't need to use as much electricity or any electricity to cool the rooms. Um, you know, taking that heat on a, on a, you know, a roof uh, instead of just using, uh, you know, uh, PV panels, uh, 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 solar panels. Um, and you dedicate a little bit of that to solar heater. Oh. And then you take that and you heat the water. You heat the rooms. Yeah. You can also, if you're particularly around, uh, you know, hotels and you have restaurants in there, you can preheat ovens 
Oh, really? Um, so that you don't have to use as much electricity or gas to get them all the way up to temperature. So if you got it to 150 by just turning a knob and it's the you know temperature coming down from the roof, you don't have to go that much further. Getting the ball moving is momentum. Getting the energy change costs the most than actually keeping it steady state. Um, yeah. And the same thing goes for the rooms. To cool the rooms, if you can get them down to 70 and someone wants it cooler, then you turn on the AC or the heat pump. If you're, you know, want to get above, you know, 70 from the heat on the heating side, then you turn on the heat pump to push it a little bit further. But you don't, the delta is much smaller. You use smaller equipment, smaller heat pumps because you don't, you don't have to put on this effort. Then it's about um, conversion changes. So if you have, you know, electricity, then you have to turn it back into heat. And then the heat, of course, is, is lost through exchanges. There's a, there's a cost to that. But if you're already getting heat from the roof and it gets hot on roofs, then you're, you're cutting down on conversion losses. And then you can dedicate more of the electricity to providing to that community versus just hogging it up all on your all, all on our own. That's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Use. I mean, obviously your grasp of physics is, is um, exceptional <laughs> to know all of these things. <laughs> it, I will 100% tell you. I can. I have a, a very good idea of putting systems together. So, it's, what you're trying to do is a, effectively create a zero waste system. Yeah. Um, how that system is done is done differently on per property. So it's very modular oh, um, yeah. because what we don't need to do is to get into the thinking that one um, one piece of sustainability is going to or one technology is going to rule them all. So we're no, very. That, I, I preach that all the time. Yes. all the time yes we're very good at point efficiency but really terrible at system efficiency so okay for the way the rest of the system works is everything has a second life as everyone is individuals or all these financial gurus are always telling you your money needs to do something in the background nothing should hit a dead end yeah. so if there's you know like there's there's a server room you have to have to run all these computers and pumping out a bunch of heat that should go to help heating hot water um, or heating rooms, like take it away, put it into the system. Um, any waste heat after it's done heating the, the rooms and, and preheating places can be put through a Stirling engine that then creates more electricity. So every oh. everything has a second life the way we designed it. Um, That's of course, Stirling engines are not particularly efficient, but because they're taking things that you just dump outside, you know, and just dump into the normal environment, it is efficient because we're, we're the the uh, hundred percent waste is better is way worse than twenty three percent efficiency in changing that over <laughs> to electricity. So it's better to have that the, the recapture, recapture you know twenty some odd percent than yeah. having it all go to waste. Absolutely, I mean uh, waste not want not right. Another yeah. Jeffersonian. So just to give people a little background, Lavar and I were talking earlier. Thomas Jefferson had one of the first coins out there. On the back of it, he stamped "Mind your business." We love that, uh, that line. So another Jefferson was waste not, want not. If you know, we should be living by these rules. Yes. So I think we're starting to turn that corner as a, as a society of saying like, hey, like where are th these things going? Like recycling is a huge scam. Like very little of it gets done. Oh, no. The cans, yes. So aluminum has a high price. So they're more than willing to take it back. Plastic, no. Plastic is pennies. They'll throw that out real fast unless it's a very explicit um, um, thing. And plastics also have a certain amount of times you can recycle them before they become unusable anyway. Completely unusable, yeah. Yeah, so we're starting to turn the corner and saying like, oh, some of the stuff that we're fed as sustainability are scams. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, keep yeah. the critical eye. Keep the critical eye. Hold your companies just as accountable as you hold yourself. So if you're at home composting and then you're buying from companies that are not, why do you have to do that when the companies you're buying from are not? And quite frankly, 10%, 10 companies account for like 80% of the uh, carbon emissions worldwide. So every, everyone stopped driving cars, stopped flying everywhere. Those 10 companies, you only affected it by 20%. I know. Those companies and have we to We got to hold the these larger well. companies accountable. Absolutely. Yes. And it's also, it is a corporate liability and we're starting to turn the corner on that too. Climate okay. change is a corporate liability. If so, like, for instance, we take that beach and a huge storm that only happens once every 20 years is happening every year. And they're like getting knocked down. And we very much focus on the whole the, the homes on the, um, the, on the beach, which is very necessary. People are affected just as much. 
But what we don't talk about is that hotel that's down the road that is now closed or destroyed. That is an economic toll as well. And those people that probably lived there also worked at the hotel. So now they don't have jobs as well as they don't have homes. So yeah. how do they bounce back? And then it takes a long time to get that hotel back. Even if their home is repaired, that hotel may never come back or it's not repaired. That is a liability. And think as about I, the tourists that come in and spend money in that town and contribute to the tax dollars of that town. Yes. So there's a lag. So a storm happens. You may get backing up, but people may be still afraid. And then they'll still there's a lag behind that. And then as it starts to build back up, then something else happens and you're back to square one and people are now afraid. Yeah. Um, so then you start getting a rep of saying like, hey, I don't know if I should book individuals say, hey, I don't know if I should book this trip there because I don't know if this, if it's going to be there or it's going to disrupt my thing and people don't get their airfare back anymore. You know, like oh, yeah, the hotels, yeah. you know, or the hotels say this is non-refundable. So then they're like, this is a risky situation. I'm not going to put my money here. I'll rather go to some place that I know is not risky. Yeah. Then on top of that, you'll have insurance companies. So not only are individuals being denied insurance, hotels are too. Yeah. So I have a, um, uh, I, you know, someone that I know that's in the business that's in Florida. His monthly um, uh, insurance bill went up by $12,000 and no damage has happened. Yeah. It was $12,000 per month. Yeah, per <laughs> month. Yeah. A very small econo box hotel. So he's not raking in millions of dollars and charging his average rate per night is like, I think, 85 bucks. Yeah. That is a huge hit for him. And he's like, I don't know if I can stay. And the second your insurance gets denied or insurer says, I don't want it, you lose 20% of your value of that property. Because now everyone else is like, I don't want it either because I, this is a liability on me. Yeah. So, no, it's a huge problem. The insurance industry um, pulling out of certain regions is, is devastating. Yeah. So it, it's, it, it's a thing and we're just as responsible. And how can we fix it? By using some technology, using good practices. You know, um, so there's also food sustainability where the food's coming from. So we do have oh, yeah. the, you know, algae growth system that we have, like, you know, provide food, alcohol. Oh, God, what is it? What's the brand name of it? No, the PR Ethel. people are going to, my PR company is going to kill me. Um, I have the name, say the name. Um, it is the, we have the bio al fuel. Um, algae Ethel. helix, algo helix system. Al oh, okay. Sorry. So <laughs> effectively it's combining a lot of things and it's kind of like DNA. And I liked, I, I think I like that word. Um. And what on, um, so you can take something. So again, we'll go back to sustainability being a, not being a place in which uh, one thing can rule it all. So solar panels may be great for here, but you go yeah. far north in, in Norway, solar panels aren't it because half of the year it's going to be dark and those solar panels will sit idly by. Yeah. So how do they heat their homes? Maybe they have hydrothermal. What if they do not have access to hydrothermal? then how do you do this stuff? They may have to burn stuff, wood pellets or something that people are getting back into because solar panels and, and, and again, then you have like energy storage, like, okay, maybe they can make, you know, six months out of the year, make all this energy. Then you have to store that energy for the winter and you have like miles and miles of batteries that could catch fire. And, and also it's a, you know, a and they, do, they can't hold that charge forever too. Yes. So like what kind of duty cycle are you having in those locations? So perhaps they do need to burn something. So how, instead of burning wood, which they'll chop down trees, which affects their biome, they can burn algae uh, biofuel, which is grown on property. It could be grown with grow lights. So you, you do, you know, or have a loop that goes outside for a little bit. As long as the water is warm enough, the algae will be fine. Yeah. Um, and circle back in as long as they get, a, you know, brief amount of uh, sunlight. And, um, it's, you know, 98% less water intensive than, um, you know, corn ethanol, in, in fact, because it's a closed system. The water doesn't evaporate. So for plants to grow that are non-woody plants, I'm getting to my biology. I'm sorry. Um, you need evaporation. So that's why you're at home. You got your little house plants and you have to squirt them with water because it helps pull the water up. They don't have sap. That's what sap is. Sap helps pull water and transport it and nutrients around, um, you know, uh, around uh, and they help it helps balance it out kind of so you need water to evaporate then you're gonna have water that runs off when you're watering you know corn then there's water that drains past the roots it doesn't get caught and then there's some water that does affect it so you have all these losses with this water just to go and then burn um you know uh turn into fuel and then burn it 
you can do this anywhere. So also you're that far north in Canada or not that far north in you know near the Arctic, your growing season is going to be crazy short. Yes, it is. Um, the soil may not be there for that kind of, um, you know, and then you have fertilizer you have to put into the ground that directly affects the environment. There's a lot. So this is a closed system that can be done anywhere. It can be done in Dubai. And you also do not need to use fresh water for those products. You can use salt water and use salt water algae yep. for that. Yes, so it's, absolutely. you don't need to pull potable water that you could use for yourself. Corn, you do need to use potable water, um, for those things. Um, uh, cause you, yeah, there's a whole other reason why you don't use unpotable water, but you could like poison, start poisoning birds because they oh, yeah. eat corn and it gets into the environment and we can make the, you know, you'll not just poison, you won't poison yourself, but you poison the environment. Yeah. Um, so there's that. I'll never use salt on ground because it'll turn, you'll ruin the crops, everything. You'll never grow anything ever there ever again. So yeah, we, medieval uh, times, they learned that lesson the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, um, and you also have rest periods with, you know, uh, agriculture where you have to let the ground rest for a certain number of seasons. And it, it's a whole entire thing. So it's well I've, thought out technology that you've come up with. I mean, yeah. just between um, the energy, the bio biofuels and the cut, the key energy yes. <laughs> that I mispronounced. Um, no, I mean, you really have thought this out quite well and you're clearly knowledgeable about yeah. every aspect and um, depth of this. And doing the hospitality industry, most people wouldn't really focus on that. They'd focus more on themselves or other industries. But you really do have a passion for hospitality and helping people out. Um, before we close out, though, I do want people to understand why you chose Y-O-G-H, pronounced Y, yes. as the symbol. Because this is actually, it's a, it's a historic symbol. Yes, it is the old symbol for Y, like ampersand. And you could kind of like bring that around and say, like, be the why, not the because. Be the reason we're driving ourselves forward. And I absolutely say that every you have to do it together. Yeah. Um, stop being reactive. If we see that there's a problem coming our way, let's stop it before it happens. Um, and I'm, you know, always here to always chat with everybody about sustainability. I'm here always to learn. There's a lot of things I learned along the way. Um, you know, we partnered a lot with universities to help with studies. Um, you know, the younger generation is very much about, you know, Gen Zers are very much about. Oh, yeah sustainability because they may not have a world, you know, their kids may not have a world and Jen uh, Alpha as well, you know, to think that we could be the last, you know, um, generation that sees polar bears, you know, like that kind of thing is it, it's, it's jarring is this, this isn't a comet that's hitting the planet. It's kind of us. Um, and we're just watching we, it come our way. It was like, yes, yes, go there. <laughs> um, but we can do things in a way that like, yeah, like air travel, I'm hundred percent about tourism, obviously we, we, being in hospitality. Tourism yes. is a great equalizer, is a great way of connecting with other people, and it's a great way of destroying xenophobia. So yes. it is, you know, it's a cultural loving experience. It's also a disconnect from your life. There's a mental health aspect to it, being able to relax, see how everything else goes in other places, like trying sampling food. That's my thing. I love food. Um, so if you ever like, hey, let's go get some food, I'm always down for it. And like, give me the weirder, wilder things, like bring it here. Um, <laughs> So it's like, so how do we do the sustainable batteries aren't going to work. We're going to have to use hydrogen or some sort of biofuel. Biofuel mm -hmm. might be better and easier, particularly around algae based biofuels, because it can be grown and produced, not just in one central location. It could be done in smaller spots. Hell, it could be done in the middle of the, the you know, the, um, terminals. You can have it run along the windows. Yeah. No, yeah. that's actually, art installations. Like it, 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 we have a lot to do and. Sometimes you just hit the low, the hanging fruit that's already there because it's so close. And you're also thinking it through all the way. Most people, they see that, that low hanging fruit, but they don't know how to get started. They don't know what to do. You've actually figured out how to do it, how to get there, how to make it simple by your modular designs that you said you can go to Home Depot and get replacement parts. That is fabulous because a lot of people are stuck with backlog items or inavailability of certain materials that they need to replace. So making it easy and simple for everyone, that actually speaks volumes of your, the depth of your knowledge base that you have for this. Um, what is the best way for people to find you? Because um, you, you you are quite the Renaissance man. You have the engineering, you have the physics background, you've got the art background, you do travel a lot. You and I have talked about your travels. How do people find you? Because you're absolutely fascinating. 
Um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm always on LinkedIn, so please reach out, particularly people who have fully sustainable companies. Please reach out. I want to see the talk to you about your products. I want to see what development. Um, I would like want to turn algae into our textiles because there's companies that do that. You know, oh. we can get everything built locally with local hands and you know, transportation issues. Um, you can find Yo Group um, on uh, LinkedIn as well, and our website uh, Yo dot group Y O G H dot group. Um, there is, you know, we're we're uh, we're us. So just put the name in, and you'll find us. Like we're there, we're the first hit. <laughs> you are. You are. You are actually pretty easily found. When I was searching for you on LinkedIn, you just popped right up because I put in Lavar. I didn't know your last name at the time, but I had Lavar and then Y O G H. And it popped up first thing there. I'm like, there, there you go. You are very, it's a good name. You, you have mastered, um, what is it? The SEO or whatever it is. Yeah. The <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Option. Yeah. That, that was, uh, new to me. I did not know about that word when I started ESJ, the most common three words ever for the environmental world. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can't have justice or equity if people can't have places to live. People yes. who are disadvantaged monetarily do have the are most affected by uh, climate change because they're the ones on the front lines they're Absolutely. the ones who live in yes. the areas that people may not want to live because of the, the river floods and their storms and there's forest fires Water and they pollution. don't have the ability to flee so yeah. if we if, if we want to do high impact things that are are, are are impactful start there and we move up so you know sorry my dog just knocked over my light Oh no! <laughs> it and I just caught it because he is afraid of the rain. We have rain in California, and my tough pit bull is afraid, and he just knocked over my light. My apologies. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely, it happens. It happens. <laughs> um, thank you. I, it's been like it, like the message I want to leave people are is that let's move forward, let's be stronger, and we don't need to a sustainability doesn't need to cost more. Yeah. B is not just for the, for the rich. C yeah, we can, we have to do it together, including corporations, including big business. They have to do it just as much as us, the individuals have to do it as well. I thank you for saying that because so many people feel overwhelmed and at a loss because they're like, there's only so much I can do there. You know, if I don't drive and walk everywhere, ride my bike everywhere, if I stop, you know, using all plastic for everything and I only do this, it shouldn't just be on us. Mm -hmm. The large, I would rather see large power plants stop burning petroleum and using other fuel sources. We saw that with COVID when manufacturing facilities had to shut down for a short period. We saw a pretty rapid change in our atmosphere conditions. Yes. We can do it. We just have to hold these guys accountable and say, we are it. We have the technology. We have the capability. Y'all just need to start doing it. Yes. Yes. It is that simple. I will say, I want to make sure that the message I send to consumers are that you are not liable for how that product is made, but you should demand how that product is made. So if, for instance, I order, you know, pizza and the delivery guy and the delivery guy like run somebody over. I was not, I didn't tell you to run the person over. I just wanted pizza. Yeah. So, but the way things are framed is that it's oh, our fault. How dare you want this? You just figure how out how to get us pizza. to it. So use better materials. You be ethical about your sourcing. Um, you know, they're always willing to throw another, oh yeah, inflation went up. So this is up by 30%, even though it was effectively shrinkflation and corporate greed that caused most of the things. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, oh, well, that's a whole nother conversation. Yes. <laughs> we can talk hours about that one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, on that, LeVar, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I think what you're doing is great. And guys, stay tuned because LeVar is going to come back a couple more times to talk about other things he's working on because um, it is not just the hospitality, it is not just the Yo group or the Y group, however you wanna say it. Um, there are quite a few things he's working on. So um, he will be back. We will be talking quite frequently because there is a lot going on. Um, LeVar, thank you. I appreciate your time today. You are a wonderful human being. <laughs> thank you very much. Anytime guys, I am your host, Wendy Nystrom, Environmental Social Justice. We'll check you out next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>